Welcome back. I'm here to read with you Chapter 5, Turbulence Ahead. As soon as Connor had an inkling of his sister's whereabouts, he rushed to the nearest computer and bought the five remaining tickets on the next flight to, walk to New York City. He used Bob's credit card without asking, but Bob couldn't care less. All that mattered to anyone was finding Alex and bringing her home. Liberating the fairy tale world would have to wait until they figured out what was happening in Manhattan. At five o'clock the next morning, without any sleep whatsoever, Connor, Bree, Jack, Goldilocks, Red, and Charlotte piled into Charlotte's SUV and headed to Willowcrest International Airport. Connor had no idea what to expect once they got to New York, but he knew it'd be easier to handle it with his friends at his side. They left the hospital in such a hurry, no one had a chance to pack. But knowing what his friends usually carried on their persons, Connor managed to grab a duffel bag before they left the hospital so Jack's and Goldilocks' more questionable belongings could be stowed. When they arrived, Connor ran into the airport to check their bag while his friends waited outside. They stood on the curb by Charlotte's car and took in their first sights of the other world beyond the halls of St. Andrew's Children's Hospital. So this is what they call an airport, Jack said as he cradled Hero. It's what exactly is is a port of air? It's where you board planes that take you to other locations, Bree explained. Like a stable? Goldilocks asked. Yes, but with much bigger horses. Jack and Goldilocks nodded and looked around in awe, but Red wasn't as impressed. It's rather colorless in the other world, isn't it? She remarked, and if you ask me, the whole gray and glass thing is a bit overdone. As soon as he finished inside, Connor emerged through the, t the airport's automatic doors and joined his friends at the curb. The bag's been checked under my name, he said. Apparently, it's completely legal to travel with a sword and an axe as long as they're checked. That's America for you. What is checked? Jack asked. It means they'll stow our luggage under the plane before we leave, and when we arrive, it'll come out on a conveyor that it, at the baggage claim. Connor's friends from the fairy tale world stared at him like he was speaking in tongues. We have absolutely no idea what any of that means, but we'll take your word for it, Goldilocks said. Me Does everyone have their tickets and ID, Connor asked the group. Bree, Jack, Goldilocks, and Red held up the tickets they had printed at the hospital and the identification cards they'd been assigned. Unfortunately, traveling with friends from another dimension means that airport security would be a challenge. If they had more time, Connor would have come up with better idea IDs that resembled his friends more, but given their time crunch, they had to work with what they had. Will someone notice that these aren't our actual identities, Jack asked. I'm praying the TSA officer won't notice, Connor said. We'll get into serious trouble if we're caught. So if anyone asks, Jack is Dr. Robert Gordon, Goldilocks is Charlotte Gordon, and Red is Bree's cousin, Amanda Campbell. Bree, would you happen to be um, have a more attractive relative that I could impersonate, Red asked. Sorry, that's all I got, Bree said. Amanda's ID has gotten me into dozens of concerts I was too young for. I hope it brings you the same luck. Char Connor nervously eyed the airport. We're going to need more than luck to pull this off, he said. Connor, this is too risky, Charlotte said from inside the car. Why don't Bob and I just come with you? I need you guys to keep an eye on the characters from my short stories, he said. Besides, the five of us have a long history of magical dilemmas. We'll know what to do if things get out of hand. We'll call you if we need backup. Charlotte closed her eyes and let out a long sigh. She knew Connor and his friends were more than capable of handling themselves, but it didn't make it any easier knowing that her son might be walking into danger. Please be safe, she said. If you find your sister, let us know as soon as possible. We will, Connor promised. I promise. He hugged his mother through the car window and let his friends into the airport. At first glance, Jack, Goldilocks, and Red were completely overwhelmed. Travelers brushed and bumped into them from all directions. Everywhere they looked was another flashing screen that displayed departure times and announced delays. The commotion was too much for Hero, and he began to fuss. Here, give them to me, Goldilocks said, and took the newborn from Jack. There, there, no need to cry. Who's Mama's good boy? Who's Mama's good boy? It tickled everyone to watch Goldilocks interact with her son. Ever since Hero had been born, Goldilocks had been a different person altogether. The infamous fugitive and swashbuckling swordswoman was now the queen of baby talk and changing diapers at record-breaking speed. However, motherhood hadn't softened Goldilocks one bit. On the contrary, being a mother had made her tougher than ever, especially when someone came in between her and her child. Goldie, are you sure taking Hero to New York is a good idea? A red ass. Babies need a lot of attention, you know. We're still taking you, aren't we? Goldilocks snapped. 
Red raised her hands defensively. I was just suggesting you leave him with Charlotte while we're gone. Caring for an infant and searching for a friend is quite a handful. Absolutely not, Goldilocks said. I refuse to be one of those women who puts her entire life on hold because she's a mother. I am more than capable of fulfilling my responsibilities to my child without abandoning my friends. Sorry I asked, Red said. Personally, I would have hired a nanny before purchasing a cradle. Connor guided his friends through the crowded airport to the long security line. He stood on his toes to see over all the heads and took a good look at the TSA officer working the front. The officer was an older man who scowled at all the travelers as if a sour piece of candy were stuck in his mouth. He thoroughly checked every person's ID and ticket before allowing them to pass. Oh shoot, he's good at his job, Connor bemoaned. Bree and I will be fine with our student IDs, but I don't know how to sneak you guys past him. It would be much easier if Alex were here. She could just zap him with a magic spell and it'd be done with it. Looks like we have to zap him with a bit of your magic instead, Jack said. Connor sighed. Jack, I appreciate the sentiment, but th this is no time for another pep talk. I'm being serious. We don't have your sister's talent, so you'd have to use your own. Imagine this was one of your stories and your characters were in this exact predicament. What would you have, do have them do to, and, or say to get past the officer? Connor scratched his chin and walked in a circle as he thought about it. He appreciated the encouragement, but the consequences of failure were more severe than his friends could imagine. It took creativity just to survey the other world. He would need a stroke of genius to manipulate it. I've got an idea, he said. If the officer notices your IDs are fake, you'll need to distract him. Say something completely unexpected that'll make him forget what he's thinking about. Oh, I know, Red said. I'll say I'm a queen from another dimension. That'll only make things worse, Connor said. I've got a line for each of you, but you have to say it exactly as I tell you. He whispered the diversions into his friend's ears and hoped that they would do the trick. We shouldn't stand in line neck to, uh, together, Bree said. If he notices the IDs are fake, it'll look less suspicious if we're spaced out. Good idea, Connor said. All right, here goes nothing. Connor and Bree entered the line first. Once five passengers had lined up behind them, Jack followed. Goldilocks waited for six passengers to line up behind her husband and then join the line with Hero. Red was a little confused about how a line worked. She let over a dozen people cut in front of her before realizing she was supposed to wait behind them and follow them to the officer. Finally, after 40 very anxious minutes, Connor and Bree reached the front of the pr and presented their tickets and identification to the TSA officer. He read their boarding passes and looked them up and down with the same skull he had worn all morning. Are you two together, the officer said. What? Connor asked in shock. No, we're just friends. Well, at least I think. We haven't had a chance to figure it out. Sir, I'm asking if you're traveling together, the officer said, and scowled even harder. This airline is not concerned with your relationship status. Connor blushed so hard he was afraid his cheeks might melt off his face. Obviously, his anxiety was getting the best of him. If Bree hadn't been equally anxious, she would have burst out laughing. Yes, we're traveling together, she said. The TSA officer looked them up and down one last time and initialed their tickets. Go ahead, he said. Next. Bree and Connor walked past the officer and joined a smaller line for the metal detector. They took their time putting their shoes and belts into bins so they could keep an eye on their friends. After a few moments, Jack was next in line and handed his ticket and identification to the TSA officer. Good morning, Jack said cheerfully. I'm going to New York. The TSA officer read Jack's documents before looking at him. As the officer's ga gaze moved upward, he, Jack repeated Connor's suggested line before the officer could notice his ID wasn't legitimate. Hair plugs, Jack announced. Excuse me, the officer said. Hair plugs, Jack repeated. I'm sure you're wondering how I got my hair back. I see you're follically challenged yourself, so I'm happy to pass along my doctor's information if you're interested in getting plugs. Technically, he's not a real doctor, and he works out of a kitchen in Chinatown. But as you can see, his work is wonderful. The T office, TSA officer was so offended, his mouth fell open. He shook his head as he initialed Jack's ticket and handed the documents back to Jack without giving the ID a second glance. I'm not interested in hair plugs, the officer growled. Get out of here. Suit yourself, Jack said. Connor and Bree were relieved when Jack joined them in line from the, for the metal detector, but their mission was far from over. Before they knew it, he, he, uh, Goldilocks and Hero were stepping up to the TSA officer's stand. The officer looked back and forth between Goldilocks and Charlotte's ID and meticulously studied their faces. Ma'am, have you recently lost weight? He asked. Obviously, Goldilocks said and nodded to Hero. 
The TSA officer wasn't convinced. He knew something was different, but he just couldn't put his finger on it. Did you also change your facial structure? He further pressed. Goldilocks glared at him with a scowl that rivaled his own. You'd be amazed how much the body can change after giving birth. Shall I give you the details? The TSA officer looked like he was going to be sick. He quickly initialed the ticket before she had a chance to elaborate. Have a nice flight, he said without looking Goldilocks in the eye. With Connor, Bree, Jack, and Goldilocks successfully passed the officer, the only one left was Red. They tried to stay close in case they needed to intervene, but they were herded toward the metal detector by other TSA officers. Soon they were out of earshot and prayed Red could handle it herself. Red sauntered up to the TSA officer and presented her ticket and Amanda Campbell's ID with a large smile. The officer scanned her documents, initialed her ticket, and handed them back without a problem. Connor was shocked it had gone so smoothly, but then the officer said something that absolutely infuriated Red. She stomped her foot and pointed dramatically at him. How dare you, sir, she yelled loudly enough for the whole airport to hear. That's the biggest insult I've ever received in my life. The officer's skull shifted to a look of terror. Red stormed past him and joined her friends at the metal detector. What the heck just happened, Connor asked. What did he say to you? Red held up the ID of Amanda Campbell. He said this was a good picture of me, she grumbled. The metal detector was a very foreign concept for Connor's friends, so it required a great deal of supervision and reassurance. Connor had to promise Jack he would get his boots back after they were scanned. Bree had to stop Goldilocks from putting Hero into one of the bins, and Red had to be scanned by hand because she refused to part with her jewelry. But once they were through the detector and had gathered their things, they had officially snuck through airport security. I can't believe we just pulled that off, Connor said. I can't believe, I don't think I breathed since we joined the security line. I wasn't worried for a second, Jack said. But then again, I have a lot more faith in you. They turned a corner and Jack, Goldilocks, and Red froze. The sight of all the stores, coffee shops, bars, and restaurants throughout the terminal was almost too much to bear. Oh my, it's like a little kingdom, Red said. What's that heavenly aroma, Goldilocks said. That's called coffee, Bree said. It's a really big deal in the other world. What's the place with all the moving pictures of men on grassy fields, Jack asked. That's called a sports bar, Connor informed. And that's where, it, where people go to watch other people play games. What about that shiny room with all the small bottles and portraits of beautiful but bored women, Red asked. That's a perfume store, Bree said. Red was amazed that such, that such a place existed. They let commoners wear perfume in this world? Oh, I've got to see this. The young queen dashed for the perfume store before Bree could grab her. Since they had some time to kill before their flight boarded, Connor thought it was perfectly fine to let his friends explore the other world amenities in the airport. He took Goldilocks to the coffee shop and ordered her a vanilla latte. While Goldilocks enjoyed her latte, Connor took Jack to the sports bar. He did his best to describe the rules of the football and baseball games being broadcast, but Jack was convinced he was making it up as he went along. Bree had the exhausting task of supervising Red as she bounced from shop to shop. It was like watching a hyper toddler in a toy store. At 6.30, 15 minutes before boarding, the gang regrouped at gate 26 and took seats. Red proudly showed off all the purchases inside her enormous shopping bags. I must say, what this world lacks in color, it makes up for in merchandise. I found this exquisite leather bag made from an animal called a foe. I got this delicious bottle of perfume called Perf for Breeze. I bought this handy hand mirror with electric torches inside the frame. And lastly, I couldn't walk away from this colorful pamphlet called Gl Gl Glamorous Magazine. Look, it has an article titled How to Steal Your Man Back from His Ex. I hope it mentions something about magic mirrors. How did you pay for all this? Connor asked. Pay? Red said as if it were a word from another language. She didn't. I did, Bree said. She would have gotten arrested for shoplifting if I hadn't had my emergency credit card on me. It's maxed out, so the next emergency is on someone else. Don't worry, I got gifts for all of you, Red announced. Connor, I got you this shirt that says, I do not I do my own stunts. Classy, right? Jack, I got you this world's greatest grandfather hat. Sorry, they were out of father. I just, I got this adorable stuffed frog to suit, uh, in suit for Hero, so he'll always know that his Uncle Charlie looks like. And Goldilocks, I got you this convenient little contraption called a baby Bjorn. Why carry your child when you can wear him? Thanks, Red. It's very kind of you. Your thoughtfulness is always surprising me. 
For whatever reason, Goldilocks was speaking much faster than she usually did, and her left eye started to twitch. Good heavens, Goldie, what happened to you? Red asked. It's called caffeine, Goldilocks said. I had a latte, a vanilla latte to be exact. It's a br br uh, brilliant beverage. I was so tired a few moments ago, but now I feel incredible. I would fight a whole army of my, with my bare hands, actually. I'm going to get some more. And I'm going to stop there. I'll see you guys on the second half of the chapter in the next video. Bye.